Hi and welcome to another Razorback screencast. In the last video we looked at this uh, arm and we figured out how we can combine most of the uh, UV maps into one space. So just to recap that concept, if I select large arm, we can see here that the large arm occupies a part of our UV map, small arm occupies a different part, forearm, etc. We made it so they're all roughly the same size and that's a pretty good thing in this case. So what I'll do is I will just see I've accidentally shown the sky and floor. What I meant to do is show this. So what we can do now is experiment a little bit with painting the surfaces and seeing what we can do with that. Um, first thing I'd probably want to do is hide the blade because we're not really working with that part. So it looks like if we just hide the null at the end we have just parts of the arm. So I've been thinking about this object a lot and it's probably an off-the-shelf component that is retrofitted for the daemon's needs. And that means it probably comes in some sort of bright industrial color, whether yellow or white, some sort of construction color. And it got me thinking it might be kind of cool to try replicating the sort of wear and tear that happens in normal industry with uh, the manufacturing process of getting this onto one of these machines. Now, what I mean by that is that this is going to ship yellow at which point they're probably going to break it down into its respective components and paint it all black. One of the merits of the Razorback I suppose is stealth. So we can start with that idea and see where that takes us. So if I create a new material, let's uh, create a new texture in the color channel. Let's call it right arm. And I'm going to stick with 2048 by 2048. And as a base color, let's do gray, like a light gray, because I'm thinking maybe it's made of aluminum or magnesium. And then we have our new material here. And we can call this uh, right arm mat. So we can then apply this to everywhere these are applied to. Easiest way to do that is just to select all of these and then drop this in the material slot. And now we have our sort of dull gray boring metal arm. But we want to start painting it and getting a little creative. So we need to switch to the texture view. I don't think I have a view set up for painting specifically, so let's see what I can do here. If I go to customization, new group window, I can actually put a window at the bottom of my screen, which will allow me to readjust the size that's being captured. And I'm just going to save this configuration. All right, so now I should be able to switch between regular layout and UV edit layout without uh, without ruining any of the uh, cropping any of the UI. So in this layout we have um, let's see we have we have colors, materials, we have our layers palette, brushes. So let's get to it. What we can do is go to materials and load this material in just by hitting the X. And now we have the ability to paint on the object and you can see here that if I paint in the UV edit view, it paints in the main view. So let's just start some basic layering. The base is going to be metal. And then I want to create a new layer called primer. A primer in this case is going to be whatever the arm was delivered with. And then we have a new material here called black. 
and we can mask those out to create some interesting effects. So let's see. Our primer color is going to be an industrial yellow. So not quite mustard, but somewhere in that range. So I'm adjusting this color slider, but that's actually the wrong one. This one here is the one I want. Like I've said before, body paint 3D is not my first, it's not my primary area of interest in C4D, but I definitely love it. So we have this sort of mustard yellow now selected. And I believe we can just fill the layer. I have a shortcut set up for that. So we just filled our layer with the mustard color. Look, looks good. Um, and then, you know, we can we can start adding details here anytime we want. For instance, I can add a new layer, and let's just call this um, let's call this grime. So this is going to be sort of the spots that are uh, covered in grime, and I'm going to use like a a black uh, color for that and under brushes now let's see under tool where's my brush tool here we go it appears right here in the center so the brush we're using right now is just a typical soft brush that's good I want to make sure I'm not at full pressure I like working at a much lower pressure it, uh, it, it seems to work out a lot better for me so I'm just going to size my brush so that it's roughly the size of one of these end caps. And these are the end caps of the cylinder here that I'm looking at. And we can just start to tap right there just to dim it a little bit. And as we click, every time we click, it just sort of builds on it a little bit. We can move the center around as we tap there. And what it does is it sort of creates this, uh, this central point where there's been a little bit of grime happening. So maybe the bolt or the nuts that go there are going to sort of dim that area down as it gets grease and whatnot in it. And typically what I do is I leave my grime layer as just a black and white layer of muck that I add to the object. And then I use that as the diffusion and specular channel as well. So wherever there's grime, we don't get any shiny spots either. It kind of gives a nice quality to the object. So um, we can easily have a grime layer where we just have some grime we can turn on and off. We have a primer layer and a black layer. So let's continue with the plan and see if we can make this canvas a little bit bigger. And let's cover this arm now in black paint. So I'm just going to go and get something not quite pure black. I don't I don't like using pure black unless I'm using it for a grime layer because it's just unrealistic. I've, I've never seen completely black paint. It's it's often nicer just to go with a percent. So I usually go with like 10% black and if I want it to be really dark, I bring it down to 8 or 5%. So once I have that set up, I can then fill the layer again. And we have the black arm. And so this looks pretty cool. We got a nice shine. Body paint is switching to OpenGL and back again. And the grime layer is still on top of everything. So that's interesting. But now we can sort of I try to identify spots on the arm that we think would uh would suffer a little bit of trauma while while being used. So I think this is probably a good candidate right here, this spot. So if we choose our brush tool, we see we can paint right there. But what I think we want to do, um, whoop, didn't mean to do that. But what I think we want to do is actually use a layer mask. So I'm going to add a layer mask. And now we can just paint in black and white to sort of get the effect we want. So I can go to white, we can paint. Let's see. Okay, there we go. So it looks like I uh, right click for white, left click, left click for black. So I want to switch that around. There we go. So 
now I can add and remove and as I do that we sort of reveal areas of the object so I'm painting quite haphazardly right now that's not what I want what I want is I want to be able to see my mesh here seems quite unfortunate that I can't see it against the black but let's proceed anyway and I think I want a really nice small brush so I can paint along and I probably want something a little bit scratchy like that and what we can probably do is reduce the size and the pressure I'm gonna try switching to my tablet see if that gives me a better grasp on things let's map the size to pen pressure if it will allow me to doesn't look like it, I'm not sure why let's not get too distracted and so we can basically look at the canvas to see what part I was just painting on and it looks like primarily this is the area so once we've roughed it out we can actually um, hone in the edges a little bit and sort of neaten it up into a proper scuff and once we've gotten that we can always zoom in and just make it completely completely damaged so it goes all the way through the black paint down to the yellow and we have that sort of mark left we can also add a layer mask to the uh, primer and we can go through the primer as well and so what that's hopefully going to do is to add a sort of a dimensionality to our scratch basically saying that the scratch started um, the scratch started on the layer and went all the way down to the base layer so we just have this little scratch left and we can just continue painting on these different layers where we think uh, damage might happen and we can definitely make it subtle it, it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be a very extreme um, depiction of damage to the machine and you can just use body paints awesome sort of a real-time painting to make that happen So right now things are looking like brush strokes, which is my fault, just because I'm not really giving a lot of uh, attention to how this works and to my technique. I'm, I'm really just showing that we can paint on different parts. Now even though I don't have any of these objects selected, I'm still able to paint on them, which is really cool. I'm going to switch back to a more traditional brush and see what kind of an effect I can create and so let's see if we can get that pen pressure it doesn't seem to be picking up my pen as a pressure sensitive instrument I'm not sure why perhaps it's because I plugged in my pen after I started Cinema 4D or something similar either way basically just sort of rough out the area like that and then we can go to our texture view see where that was and just sort of make it look a little bit better in this case I'm gonna make it more subtle make it look more like a scratch more like just worn area and we can always use very very little pressure and a much larger size to sort of 
buff the area around it. Make it look less like an impact area of damage, but more like it was just sort of scuffed a little bit. And again, you can always come into an area like this that you've already worked on and just sort of soften it up by removing some of the scratch effect. And you can remove some of the primer effect from below as well. And it gives a much more interesting look. And so the challenge for making everything black on this machine is sort of telling that story of wear and tear. Because something that's just um, all black paint doesn't really, it's not interesting to be honest. It's just something covered in black. Um, and so by adding these scratches, I'm hoping to give the machine a little bit more personality. And you can sort of see how that works. So once we're done doing all that sort of painting work, we can actually duplicate this arm and all of the painted surfaces would come along with it, although we probably wouldn't want that. We would probably want to uh, address those separately on their own texture. So even though you duplicate the arm and all the mapping and painting comes along, you can just duplicate the texture map as well. And once you've done that, you can actually do a lot of this painting again for the other side. So I'm just trying to clean up some of my errors here from earlier. And we can actually just paint the rest of the arm and add scratches anywhere we want. So I'm going to go ahead and paint some of this off camera. And uh, yeah, until next time, see you.